What's up everybody and welcome back to Lesson on Coding. My name is Ryan Lesson. So in today's video we're going to be talking about the switch map operator and how to use it. I will also be giving you a visualization of how this works with this quick type ahead search I have here with all 50 states. So to show you I have all 50 states I'm going to be building pretty much a filter to show these states and we'll be using the switch map operator to make our search bar way more efficient and you'll see exactly why in just a second. Okay, so now let's get right down to it. What is the switch map operator? Well, let's take it back to the basis. What is a map operator? A map operator basically takes a value and transforms it into another value. And a switch map is a form of a high order observable. So basically what we're gonna do is take a stream of values, map those values to an observable. So basically that's what we'll be doing. We'll be taking a stream and then we'll be taking the other streams, mapping them into observables and then those observables will get merged to our initial stream and then we'll be able to use it from there. But the switch map operator works very well for type heads because what happens is we will basically have this form and we're gonna be using the value changes property. And the value changes property will submit whatever I type into this search bar and we're gonna program this in just a second. So whatever I program in this search bar, basically I will be subscribed to the value change method and when that observable emits, I will then take that value, map it to another observable, and then with the switch map, I could then switch between observables. So whenever a new observable comes, that old observable is gone. So if you're typing really fast, and especially with a debounce, you could cancel requests that are going out that have not yet resolved. So let's get down to it. Let's go look at the code. Okay, so first things first, let's come here, and let's open up the code. So let's go ahead and create a subject. So now a subject is basically an observable that you could subscribe to and you could also omit values to. So we will come up here, public search, and then equals new, subs, new subject, excuse me. Okay, so now that we have this subject, let's go down here and then let's get this dot, I created the form, as you can see the forms up here are search form, so this dot search form dot value changes. So basically we're gonna have this value changes, which then just will, is an observable that we can subscribe to that emits a new value whenever we type into that input box. So with this value changes, what we're gonna be doing is then we're gonna be emitting the value from this observable, excuse me, we have this observable, we're gonna be emitting the value into our search observable. So let me just show you what I mean by that. So let's subscribe, come in here, put in value, and then we're gonna do this dot search, there it is, dot next. So when I call next, I'm emitting a value to that search observable, and that value will be the value. Okay. But remember, this is, this is going to be in a in a json form so we need to do value dot search it's the same as doing dot value on the search form this dot search form dot value is what we get of the value that's being changed okay so there we go we're emitting the search this uh the value changes to this observable so now let's subscribe to it so this is definitely easier to visualize it so this dot search form dot excuse me, this dot search dot, dot pipe. So basically we're gonna pipe all this output and then we're gonna do a couple things here. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually debounce. Now I'm gonna leave this at zero just to start. We'll change this, but basically what debounce is doing is it's gonna have a delay after we're done typing. And after we're done typing and that delay has passed, it will then emit to that observable. So. We have this to bounce, and then next up we're gonna do is add this distinct until changes. So this distinct until change, we're gonna use the bounce time, excuse me. And then distinct until changes basically means if the value has not changed, then don't emit anything. But if it's changed, emit something. Okay, and there we go. So now we're gonna add our switch map. So again, basically what our switch map's gonna do is take that value, excuse me, take the value and then map it into an observable. And then we'll be able to subscribe to that and then have this canceling effect. That'll be very, very helpful. So we're gonna come here, we're gonna do switch map, 
So make sure to import this from ARIA XJX observables. And then we'll do value. So remember this value here would be res.search. So res.search is wherever I type into that input field. So it'd be this value, come down here. And let's return this dot HTTP. I'm just using the HTTP client with a server that I just spun up real quickly in Node.js and I'll show you exactly what that's doing. Dot get and then string interpolation. It's API slash search slash and then it's just value. Okay. Oop, I have it as val. Okay, so here we go. So now we have this observable of this HTTP request going off. So now let's execute that by subscribing to this. And let's come in here and let's get the results, the res, do it as any just for types. This is a types don't complain. We'll do this dot states, which this dot states, as you can see, I'm making the API request. It's just returning the 50 states. And I'm going to just do this dot states equals res dot and it is data okay so we have this to bounce we have distinct until changes switch map subscribe let me show you the screen so i'm going to come here i'm going to open up the inspector and i'm going to go into network okay so let's go ahead and test this out shall we so if i come in here and type in c o n you don't really see too much of a difference, do you? You don't really see that cancellation. You don't really see any of that. So we're going to go into the server and we're going to add a set timeout. So you'll really be able to see that cancellation. So what I'm going to do now is first off, come here and we'll change this to 500 milliseconds. So a half a second of the bounce time. So now let's go back and then we'll see it without the exaggeration of adding that extra add timeout. So we'll come here. I'll type in. Okay, so you see it work, it's working and it takes that half a second to resolve. So the reason you're not seeing the switching is our server, our endpoint is returning the data way too quickly for us to see it. So we're gonna have to go ahead and go to that set timeout so we'll be able to see what's actually going on here. So let's go in here. Oop, let's just come in here, go into server.js. So here's just a quick node server I spun up. And right here in API search ID, we're basically taking this big JSON of states I have, mapping over them, doing some filtering. But basically what I want to touch on is right here, this set timeout. We're going to come here and we're going to exaggerate this to three seconds. So now when I come back here and I, oh, I just click right here. So now when I come back to the screen, we're going to be able to see this effect in action. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to type in a L and as you can see, canceled, canceled. And then this is waiting to pend that was pending. And so there we go. So basically what is happening here is that while those two observables have been shot out, um, they have not resolved yet because again, with our set timeout, it takes three seconds to resolve. So while instead of waiting for those inner observables to absolve those HTTP requests that we have out, SwitchMap knows not to wait around if there is a new value that's emitted. And in this case, it was A, and it's going to take the, the timeout to resolve. And then AL came in in between before that timeout was over. So it didn't wait. It canceled it. It went to the next one. And then ALA canceled AL and then went to the next one. So as you can see, this is great. This will not put a big load on your server from someone who's just typing a whole bunch of things in real fast. This helps with the debounce. If your debounce time is not enough, and if you're a slow typer, it's basically not going. It's basically going to give you that restraint. So you, it's really hard, especially if it's a very um, intensive store procedure you're running in the back end to get this data. It's not going to really hit up your endpoint if using this switch map due to that cancelization. All right, so there you go, there you have it. But let's do it one more time, shall we? C-O-L-O-R-A-D-O. -O -O. And how many do we have? See, after all that, and I took my time, Colorado was the only one that went through. Okay, so that's it for switch map. I hope you use this in all your type of heads. It's a very, very great high order observable to use 
and makes your code way more efficient. In my next video, I'll be talking about using the exhaust map and concat map. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Woo! The Colorado Rockies.